now, God, bless us. Speak to us, speak through us, and have your way. Make fallow now the grounds of our souls that the seed of life may be sown therein and the fruit of glory may be grown, sprout forth from within us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Acts chapter 2 holds the text for this morning. Beginning of verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. King James Version said the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to talk again from the, this theme the second time, recognizing the shift, recognizing the shift. I don't know about you, but if you're intuitive at all, responsive at all, if you lay any claim to anointing or feeling at all, you would have recognized the shift in the worship this morning. Not that worship isn't always good, but you can sense when something else has happened. A change has taken place. The atmosphere has changed, and there's something else going on. There's a collective God consciousness in the room. In other words, all of us have gotten to a place where we have found a move of God in our midst. Now, it's not that every person in the room gets to the same level of God or experiences the shift in the same way. That doesn't happen. But what does happen is we pass the tipping point to where there are enough people in the room who are experiencing God's presence so that everyone in the room cannot help but visually see that which is being experienced by persons in the room. You get to the point where you now can not only see it, you look out and you see something happening, but you yourself, even if you do not want to become expressive or emotive or emotional, as some would say, you yourself sense something within yourself is different in the atmosphere, even if you refuse to respond to the differentiation. You sense something is going on because you have now come into the presence of the Lord. Now, you may decide that you're not going to wave your hand, that no tear will fall from your eye, that you will not tap your foot and there will be no expression of what's going on. That's okay. But what you cannot decide is whether or not you are in the presence of God. And your spirit knows where you are, even if your flesh does not want to respond. Your spirit knows that something has happened. Your spirit intuits that there's something different in the atmosphere at that moment than there was a moment ago. Your spirit says something's going on here. Some of you will become a little quiet. Some of you might get a little tear in your spirit. Some of you might decide to enjoy the wave and go ahead and ride it. And others of us know how to show enough, enjoy it, and dance in it. But all of the people of God, every living creature in this room cannot help but understand when the atmosphere has shifted in the house. And what you've got to recognize is that when God is moving, you've got to get in the move of God. Look at somebody now, say, neighbor, get in the move. When God is moving, you've got to get into the move of God. Why do I say that? The Bible teaches us many lessons about the move of God and people getting into what God is doing when God is doing it. 
the man at the pool of Bethesda used to go down there and he would be there waiting for the angel to stir the pool so that if he got in while the angel stirred the water, he would be healed. And he wanted to find that certain claros, that certain time, that certain moment when God would be moving so he could get in for a healing. I thought I would tell you this. God does not need to have you by a particular pool at a particular time for a particular angel to show up. God can show up anywhere, anytime, at any given point and make that place your Bethesda. <laughs> he can make that place your healing place, your delivering place, your awakening place, your opening place. God can make that place the place where your eyes come open and you see clearly the anointing of God being manifested in your midst. And God wants to be manifested in your very presence because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there comes a breakthrough. There comes triumphant liberty. There comes deliverance. There comes freedom. And if you want to be free, you have to be free in the spirit. And he or she whom the Son of Man will set free will be free indeed of your past, of your failures, of your flaws, of your foibles. God wants to set you free. He teaches us something here. He, he allows us to, to have a glimpse in because on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they are gathered in one place and they are one accord. And in the midst of this one place, one accord situation, God decides that he's going to bless them in a miraculous way. God decides that he's going to do something for them and he sends to them the Holy Spirit. There are just a few things I need you to understand. As they are there, remember God has them. First they hear, then they see, then they feel. Let me do it again. They heard a sound. Amen. Then they began to see the Spirit of God moving. And they felt God's presence in a manifestation which came forth in a response to the anointing that was embedded within. Oh, help me somebody. Here God wants you to understand that God wants you to get to the place where you can receive God for yourself. And the first thing, if you're going to recognize the atmosphere when it shifted, is you've got to recognize the attitude. When you get this thing here, you have to get to the place. Somebody in here walked in this morning. You have already experienced the fear of God. You've been in this place. You came in ready. You came looking for a miracle. You came with your mind made up. I need a blessing today, and I'm not going to let go until God does something for me. You walked in this room talking about, now, Lord, do it today. If you don't do it today, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to give up. I'm going to surrender. But God said, don't worry, baby. I got your back. I'm getting ready to do a miracle, a right now anointing, a right now breakthrough, a right now change, a right now shift. But you came in with the attitude that you were going to receive. You came in and said, I came for deliverance. And deliverance I received. And God said, yes, I got deliverance with your name on it. While that is the case for some, some of you came in here just to be here. You got here because you were supposed to come. Some of you may even be in leadership positions and you came because it's Sunday and you're supposed to be in church. And let me talk to leaders here because leaders have to understand if leaders want to get in the shift 
of what God is doing, leaders have to be willing to wait on God and be in a place of meditation and prayer so God can bless them. Any leader that doesn't want to spend time waiting on God will never see what God wants to do in the tabernacle or in the sanctuary because you can't be busy all week long and don't bow your head to pray. You can't be busy every day on your job and don't ever go before the Lord and then think you're going to walk in here and all of a sudden and feel what God is doing. No! If you're a leader, you ought to lead first in prayer. You see, some of y'all, and I know, I know some of y'all, some of y'all, they had to wait. Uh, they were waiting for God to move for several days. 120 of you like it. And some of y'all have already decided that you mind waiting. Yes. God can do anything he wants to do as long as he's as fast as quick oatmeal and quick grits. Because I'm not in the they that wait upon the Lord crowd. That's what some folks say. But see, when you really get delivered and you mind, your mind is made up for God, you don't mind waiting on the Lord. Because some of what God is getting ready to do will take some time to set up. And if you want it to be done right, you want God to bless you his way in his time and in his season. And you don't want to get ahead of the plan of God for your life because there's sometimes that God is working it out. Yeah, baby, I know you're tired of sleeping single in a double bed, but don't just jump on the first man that come along because that might be a no good joker. Just let God get the one he wants for you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Come here, brother. I know you've been running around from woman to woman looking for what you want. Instead of being your male whore, why don't you slow down and let God give you a wife so that God can bless your life. You've got to get to the place where you say, God, I'll wait on you for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I felt the bishop, the spirit of Bishop Carmichael that time. Listen. Some of you need to get to Gospel of Patty LaBelle and get you a new attitude. You need the attitude that said, God, you have your way. They were up in the upper room and God was blessing them. God was speaking to them. God was ministering to them. But there was nothing happening in the room itself other than their being before God. And I want to help somebody here. You need to get used to, get your mind wrapped around some silence. Silence. You don't have to be loud all the time. I know some of us are loud. I know some of us are like Rudy Ray Moore. We got our signifying monkey and we talking junk all the time. But sometimes you can't be dolomite. Sometimes you need to just shut your mouth. <laughs> Different levels here. Listen, you, you got to understand something in here. Sometimes you've got to be silent before the Lord. Sometimes you need to be still and know that he is God. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you be still for a moment? You're moving too fast. Be still for a moment. Your spirit's trying to catch up with you. Be still for a moment. The Holy Ghost is trying to bless you. Be still for a moment. God's trying to talk to you. It is, it is in this moment that first we see that I need to recognize the attitude. The second thing I need to recognize is the atmosphere. Ah. See, God shifts atmospheres, and when God shifts the atmosphere, I need to recognize the shifting 
of the atmosphere as the strategic move of God is leading me into what God is getting ready to do next. Okay, y'all missed that. Went over somebody's head. Let me come back and grab you around the corner. <laughs> Listen, the Bible says they're in the upper room, and then the Bible says there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. I really think that that's a descriptor of what took place preceding what would happen individually to them as they spoke in tongues. In other words, they felt a shift in the atmosphere that they could only describe as wind. Y'all didn't get that? Let me come on back one more time. In other words, there are times in your life that God will let the wind blow before he changes your life up. Y'all, y'all, come on, come on. There are times when God will let wind blow in your life. And I know you think the wind is blowing to bring chaos, but there are times in your life when God will let the wind blow as a precursor before he brings in his anointing into your life. And some of us got some stuff that God needs to blow on in order to get us ready for what God wants to put on in us. Okay, I got to go to my seat. My time is almost up, but let me just give you one more thing. Not only was the atmosphere shifted, but their actions were shifted. And your action, here, this is important here. The Bible says that at that time, that the, the room filled them with the Holy Ghost. Verse 4 said, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Ooh, my God, my God. In other words, once the Holy Ghost touched them, once the Holy Ghost rested upon them, see, all I can hear in my mind is jump, jump. Once... Chris Cross said, jump. Once, once the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, it's got to change something. And I, I get excited that the first thing God took over was the tongue. If I hadn't, woo, listen. I know why God took over the tongue. Because some of us have used our tongue to bless. And some of us have used our tongue to curse. Some of us have used our tongue to tell people hello. And some people have used our tongue to damn them to hell. Some of us have used our tongue to lift folk up. And some of us have used our tongue to leave folk out. Some of us have used our tongue to raise up the dead. And some of us have used our tongue to be rough to those that are dying. But I came to tell you here, the first thing he did was allow the Holy Ghost to rest in their mouth so that their mouths began to speak with a new tongue. They had to open up their mouths and begin to speak with a new tongue. And somebody in here, you need to let the Holy Ghost Rest inside of you until you begin to speak with a new tongue. There ought to be a tongue in your mouth that'll give God the praise. There ought to be a tongue in your mouth that'll glorify his name. There ought to be a tongue in your mouth that'll say thank you. There ought to be a tongue in your mouth that'll say, God, have your way. There ought to be a tongue in your mouth that says, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. You ought to be able to speak in a new tongue. You ought to speak with power.